Joining us, we have uh, head of the Stolen Vehicle Squad, Police Inspector, Mr. Lloyd Lazarus. Pleasant good evening to you, Inspector Lazarus. Good evening to you, Mikey, and good evening to your listeners and viewers alike. Thank you. It's a pleasure having you on. Uh, for, the list for the folks, the viewers, uh, Inspector Lazarus uh, has been, is in charge of the Stolen Vehicle Squad. Uh, he conducts, of course, investigations into the larceny and robbery of motor vehicles, dismantling the operations of persons involved in these crimes, garages, chop shops, used car dealers throughout Trinidad and Tobago. And he has been a member of the TTPS for the past 27 years. Uh, it, Inspector, as a matter of fact, I, I, as we talk, I, I, something came on my phone here, uh, a white Kia K2700 stolen around 2.30 this morning. Um, I believe somewhere in the Aruka area. I, I, tell us, on a daily basis, how many vehicles are stolen throughout this country? Okay, thank you for that question, Mr. Mikey. Um, I am in fact aware of the incident that occurred this morning in Karapu concerning that vehicle. Um, generally, the Reports of larceny and robbery of motor vehicles, it varies. So there are specific times of the week and time of the day that vehicles are stolen. So sometimes you have a week may pass and you have about 10 vehicles stolen. You know, so that all depends on a lot of what activities you have happening over a particular weekend, you know, a, a lot of things, a lot of variables in, in, in that mix there. Well, so, so basically, well, of course, stealing is based on the opportunity. I guess that's what you're saying. Once the opportunity presents itself, it could be at a fete, at a gathering, uh, wherever it is. Once it's there, um, these, well, these thieves basically will, uh, of course, take advantage of the opportunity. Correct, correct. And so I would just I like to take the opportunity to highlight a few reasons why vehicles are stolen. Um, one, uh, which is most common, uh, for the commission of other crimes, such as homicides, robberies, etc. Then we have the issue of vehicles stolen because of the unavailability of parts. The other aspect of it is the cost of those parts if they become available. We also have crime of opportunity. So for instance, uh, uh, someone stops on the side of the road and leaves his driver's door open, key in the ignition, the vehicle is on. Someone passing may not intentionally uh, have come for that vehicle, but the opportunity presented itself. Then we have the issue of people stealing the vehicle for the, the purpose of reselling it because it is, in fact, a lucrative business for the uh, criminal element. And, and when you say lucrative, give us an idea, an estimated amount um, per year that you believe that, that you know, is involved in this car stealing industry. Well, that would be, we, we're talking in the millions, in the millions, high up in the millions. And, and one of the perceptions that one would have is that this is a small country. I mean, most of these vehicles, if they're not chopped up, uh, if, if they're not found, do they make their way onto an international market? Well, Mikey, we have no data that drives that, uh, that uh, position that you're adopting. Um, in fact, with respect to vehicles or engines being shipped out of the country, there's a process by which the stolen vehicles squad must verify that vehicle or engine before it leaves this, this uh, country for, for any other destination. So there's a verification process that must take, must take place, and the customs uh, also has a part to play in that role. And if we had to look at it geographically, what are the parts of Trinidad that, one, that you can say, based on data, that most of these vehicles are stolen? All right. So based on our data from the Crime and Problem Analysis Branch, we have the North Central Division, 
that that division recorded uh, it's a, a, a combination of Latin and rubber motor vehicles, right? So I'll just give you give you it as one figure. So it's 235 vehicles stolen in the North Central Division for the year thus far. In the second position, we have Central Division with 212 vehicles being stolen there. And at number three, we have the Southern Division with 170 vehicles. So those are the areas generally within Trinidad and Tobago uh, where the greatest challenge is like. Yeah. You, you know, I mean, it is, of course, the second uh, investment one would make. I mean, first be it a home, then having some transportation where one wants to be independent to have their own vehicle. Uh, so, it, it, I mean, it's going to cost people a lot of money, especially uh, when, in fact, that you're putting out this money, you're dealing with the bank, you're, you're trying to get your vehicle, and then up someone comes and just simply takes it away. Now, for example, in the United States, when it comes to children, there's something called the Amber Alert, and, and that goes across billboards. Now, the thing about it, this is, these are vehicles, and one of the things that every vehicle needs, especially in this country, is petroleum is diesel they need to pull into a gas station how come these industries are not part of putting a big dent into this that once they're spotted that something could be done in order to get these thieves right but one thing mikey that we need to recognize too that when the vehicles are stolen they are often changed to replicate another vehicle, oh. and 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 to be to be clear, uh, and 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 as simple as I can, the number plate in it in the first instance will be changed to match the type of vehicle that you see on the road. So so the K twenty seven that you spoke of that was stolen in Carapo earlier this morning. If that vehicle was to be in another location in Trinidad it would have changed the number plate from the one that it was uh, stolen with. Right. And you, you did send me, of course, the top five most targeted vehicles. One, the Nissan Tita. Two, the Nissan 80 Wagon. Three, the Toyota Aqua. Four, the Nissan B14. And five, the Nissan Wing Road. Um, it, there seems to be an easy access when it comes to the Nissan model. Correct. So that, that, that brand of vehicle oftentimes has low security features, so they are easily stolen. And, and, and that, makes, that makes the vehicle an easy target for the team. And additionally, the amount of vehicles of that type that are on the road once they are stolen, it is easy for them to blend in. And so you would see they would steal the basic colors, the white, the silver. You know, they, they would just really go after one with a, 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 a loud color. So let's say you have a yellow Toyota Aqua. The, the thief will want to stay away from that type of a vehicle. Understood. Well, I mean, you've, you've just shared some information there with us. Uh, and, and, and looking at this, uh, in your role, of course, in doing investigations, is, is many, of these, uh, many of these vehicles taken by force, or is that not the modus operandi of these thieves? Right, so I, I would want to respond to that based on the data. So earlier I would have spoken about the two categories, larceny and robbery. Right. So for the year thus far, we have had more vehicles stolen via larceny as opposed to robbery and for the purpose of the clarification of uh, larceny so this is where the person parked the vehicle at the residence or they went to uh, a venue at a, a party or something they parked the vehicle and they went away they returned the vehicle is gone the robbery is, is you know quite um self-explanatory Someone comes to you armed or unarmed and possibly takes the vehicle away from you. So yes, the, the, the increase is in relation to larceny more so. Yeah. 
And when you look at these garages and chop shops, I mean, in, in many of these areas, there has to be some red flags. I mean, neighbors, people surrounding in the surrounding areas would notice that there seems to be a heavy flow of traffic, especially after hours and what have you. Does that give some lead way into the investigations? Well, certainly that would assist. Um, but there are a number of variables. So, for instance, when, when the vehicles are stolen, and I spoke earlier about, you know, taking on the image of another vehicle, right? It, there's a small window for which the vehicle can be recovered in its current state. Outside of that, and we're talking uh, roughly uh, 24 to 48 hours, outside of that, what happens is that the vehicle's chassis and engine number is often tampered to replicate a vehicle that was previously involved in a serious accident, which was written off by the insurance company, or if it wasn't a vehicle with full comprehensive insurance, we're just talking about the damage to that vehicle was to the extent that the vehicle should not be repaired. So the stolen vehicle now presents itself as a vehicle that was previously involved in, a, in an accident. That vehicle is now sold on various platforms, inclusive of uh, Facebook Marketplace, yeah. to unsuspecting customers. Yeah. And, and I need to ask you this, uh, as far as percentage-wise, what would you say as far as a percentage of vehicles that are actually recovered and returned to their owners? Okay, so for the year to date, we have recovered 44.2% uh, of the vehicles that were stolen. Wow. And, and what would you say based on your experience? Is that, is that making a dent or is that something that you really would like to see improve? Well, definitely that is not something we would want to be comfortable with. And there's always room for improvement. Uh, hence the reason we take advantage of these opportunities to really engage members of the public to have them buy into the whole idea of vehicle security, right? Nothing is foolproof, but once you invest in some level of security with your vehicle, it adds a layer of difficulty for the would-be perpetrator and also an additional uh, avenue for recovery of the vehicle and arrest and prosecution as the case may be. And based on your experience, what would you say would be the best type of security system one should have? Well, we have, we have a, a number of um, devices you can use. We, we look at the, the ultrasonic interior monitor system that, that detects movement within your vehicle. After the car is locked, we have the GSM car alarm system that could be used. Um, I also advocate strongly for some of the older type of technology, like the gear lock shifter. Um, you have the brake pedal lock. You also have the, the one that you know a lot of people frown upon, the, the, the steering wheel lock. Those may not be foolproof, but the, the suspects, they look for easy targets. So a vehicle without any security feature is the vehicle that they would most likely go after. Yeah. I, I mean, with your years of service, have you seen, uh, I mean, the work of these thieves, have they evolved and advanced uh, into perhaps broader networks? Indeed, that is so. Uh, the, the criminal element... Their job is really to master their, their their job, you know, execute it as a way above the level of law enforcement so that they would not be caught, right? Um, you know, as, as you mentioned, that I want to highlight that in the UK and the US, they have the most advanced technologies, and yet still they struggle with the whole aspect of last year and robbery of motor vehicles. That is not to say that I'm, I'm trying to validate uh, our position at, at this time. It is just to reinforce 
how important it is to take every opportunity to invest in some type of security device to assist with the, com uh, with the prevention of the, the, the larceny of your vehicle. All right. I hope the next time we talk, we, we'll see a higher percentage than 44.2%. And I hope that you uh, get the assistance from the general public. As I said, it's a big investment when you purchase a vehicle. And I guess you definitely have to do what is best to secure that vehicle if you want to keep it. Closing comments, go right ahead. Well, again, I'd like to just uh, reinforce that we are here to really take a, a different look on the whole effect of the last year rubber motor vehicles on, on the, the, the public, right? Um, it's something that has been viewed really as organized crime because there are a lot of players involved in the stealing and subsequent resale of the vehicle, right? So we just want to have the members of the public be aware, you know, a few safety tips, if I may. You know, never leave your vehicle unattended with the keys in the ignition or with the engine idling. Avoid leaving your spare keys inside your vehicle or at your home where it can be easily accessed through windows or doors. Always ensure your vehicle is locked, which would include windows, sunroof. Always try to park in, in busy, well-lit areas. You know, and, and most, most importantly, Mikey, is that we, we encourage persons to etch some form of identification mark throughout the solid part of your vehicle on the interior. So in the event that your vehicle is stolen and recovered with a tambour chassis or engine, we could use that um, marking which you place uh, for future identification. All right. Thank you so much, Inspector. Again, keep up the good work and best of luck to you and your entire team. Thank you so much for sharing this information. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much.